Okay, so welcome everyone today in this online lecture of dynamics of robot mechanisms. Uh, we wait a few more seconds for others to join the video. And then we will continue the topic from last week, which is uh, trajectory tracking control. And today we will talk about the inverse dynamics technique or inverse dynamics control, which is also called feed forward control. And uh, with this you can reach a bit more accurate trajectory tracking than a simple PID controller or PD controller. So that will be the topic for today. So I think it is time to start. So we can quickly summarize from last week what we have. So this uh, trajectory tracking control means Trajectory tracking control means that we have some kind of robot and uh, there is a trajectory on which the so-called tool center point should be uh, moved along and this trajectory is called the desired trajectory And this desired trajectory is usually defined in the physical space. So if we are in X, Y, Z coordinate system, that this is just a vector. And this is in the physical space, so this is usually sa said it is desired trajectory in the, in the workspace. And there is another trajectory on which the robot really moves, and we would like to to match the two trajectories. So this is the trajectory which is realized by the robot and it is called realized trajectory. But they should be identical. So in case of a, a nice, nicely working controller, they converge to each other. And the positioning error eliminate along, along time. We should show that the time goes in this direction. Okay, so the, uh, the tracking error is smaller and smaller as we are propagating in time. And there was another thing, because this is the desired trajectory in the workspace, but uh, in the simplest case the controller is uh, using the joint coordinates so accordingly, we can define the desired, desired trajectory in the joint space. The desired, desired trajectory in the workspace would mean that xt, yt and zt, desired, everything is desired, okay? And uh, if we perform the so-called inverse inverse kinematics calculation, then we will be able to determine the desired time history or desired trajectory of each joint coordinate. So after inverse dynamic inverse kinematics, sorry, the joint coordinates will be defined in time. We will have some kind of desired trajectory for all joints from 1 to n, if this is an n degree of freedom robot, of course. So this is the trajectory tracking. And one very simple uh, concept is to use a, a PED controller. So we define some control input in which 
there is a term which is related to the positioning error, the position error in the joint space. So there was a Q minus Q desired, which is basically the position error in the joint space. There was a minus sign here. And we also have another term which is related to the rate change of the error in the joint space. So this is the basically the error of the desired and the realized joint velocity. So this was a simple PD controller and the problem was that we observe that there is always some kind of positioning error there is always positioning error and we said that one solution is to use a PID controller And you may heard in the other part of the subject from Professor Gabor Stepan that this can cause some additional stability problems, so maybe this is not the best choice. The other choice is to use some kind of inverse dynamics. Inverse dynamics, and today this will be the topic how to perform this so called inverse dynamics control. Okay, so that's the topic for today. And again, if something is not clear, please uh, please ask in the comments. Okay, so I will try to react in the video. Okay, so for today, the topic is the inverse dynamics control. Or in other words, we can say feedback linearization or we also can say that feed forward control so they are all very similar concepts so we can check what it means and uh, for first we will uh, try to understand the idea behind okay so there will be an example which will help us to understand the idea behind this so-called feed forward control or inverse dynamics control understanding of of the core idea and this example will be a very very simple example but it will show the core idea basically so there will be a, a weight which is uh, elevated so it can be a, it can be considered as a model of an elevator so this is an elevator model oops sorry yeah so this is a, a winding mechanism up here so this is a winch and uh, it is fixed to the ground and then a cable comes down and on the cable there is a big mass denoted by M okay and uh, so this is a winch here with radius R and uh, mass moment of inertia theta C for example but we can get rid of this mass moment of inertia so I don't want to 
have a more complicated model, so we only have this uh, inertia here, which is the mass itself. And the whole thing is in the gravitational field. So this is the, the model to show the concept of the feedback linearization. And we can uh, try to find out what should be the control here. But first we need a free body diagram for that because we would like to have the Newtonian equations. So first we construct the free body diagram. So we have this uh, mass block here with mass m. And of course there is a gravitational force acting on the, the elevator basically. So it can be considered as an elevator. And uh, another important thing is to introduce the coordinates and let's say that the vertical position is the only general coordinate of the system, so this is the elevation of the whole elevator above the ground, above the ground level, so this is the ground level here. Very good. So, if this is the positive direction of the coordinate, the position coordinate, then we should introduce the acceleration in the same positive direction. This is the acceleration of the whole elevator. And one important thing is missing, because there is a cable force here which can help to lift the whole mass of the elevator and we can call it K, for example. So this is the free body diagram from, for, the, for the elevator itself. But there will be another free body diagram. The numbering will be, for example, this is free body diagram 1. And the other free body diagram will be number two and it will be related to this uh, winch here which is basically a disc on which the cable is uh, accumulating so there is a disc and uh, the cable goes down here and therefore the cable force is applied here and uh, There is a torque and this is the important thing, actually I will change it to red to show that this is the control input U, because th this is a torque but this is exerted by a motor or some kind of actuator, okay, so this is U is a torque. And it is exerted by a motor. or actuator or some kind of drive, okay? And of course there are, it will be not uh, interesting for us, there will be some kind of uh, constraint forces, but they will cancel out from the equations of motion. Okay, so we have two free body diagrams, and let's uh, create the dynamic equations of this whole elevator system. I think I can get rid of this model and we only have the free body diagrams and uh, we can create the dynamic equations from the first free body diagram we see that uh, the mass times the vertical acceleration is equal to the sum of the vertical forces and any other direction is not interesting for us so it will be equal to the cable force minus the gravitational force and this is our whole dynamic equation for the elevator itself and there will be another equation which is related to the winch and uh, we said that the mass moment of inertia is zero 
Okay, this theta or theta a, it doesn't matter actually. The mass moment of inertia is zero. So on the left hand side there is zero because there should be mass moment of inertia times angular acceleration, but this whole term is zero. And it is equal to the sum of the torques calculated to the to this fixed point here. So it will be basically uh, u minus the cable force times the radius of the of the winch. There is no too much space here, but this is the this is the radius. So this is the cable force times the radius, which is equal to the to the control torque basically. So we have these two equations and we can uh, add them together so we can substitute this uh, control torque here via the cable force. So we can express the cable force and then we will get the whole dynamic equation of this uh, elevator including the control torque. So m times q double dot and I will put this term into the left hand side plus m times g is equal to and I express the cable force from here which is equal to u over r so I can put it here okay so this is the whole dynamic equation And now let's try to try to work with a simple PD controller. Okay, so let's let's try let's try the PD controller. It means that the control input is calculated based on the positioning error and the velocity error so we introduce one more thing it can be also shown in this figure let me get rid of this small t so this is the actual position of the elevator in the vertical direction and this is the desired position so we would like to move the elevator into this desired position okay that's very important And we can say that the control input is simply put together by using the proportional gain. Yeah, the naming is important basically. This is the proportional gain. It is gain because it scales the error because it multiplies Q minus Q desired. This is the positioning error. And we have another term which is related to the to the velocities q dot minus q dot desired and this is the differential gain because it scales it scales the the velocity error Okay, so this is the control and we can put this to the control, sorry, here into the control torque and then we can check how this equation behaves. So now we put together everything. So the control is the formula for the control input is substituted into the equation of motion and we will obtain something which can be analyzed
Okay, so this minus sign is just collected and uh, everything is over R and now I have to write that there is the proportional gain plus the derivative gain or differential gain and this is Q minus Q desired and here we have Q minus Q desired dot. So this is the whole equation for the elevator together with the control. Okay, so the control is put here. Sorry, yeah. Here, yeah. And now we can check how it behaves. So so there will be two problems. There is a static error. And we can check the static error by just checking the equilibrium position. So we substitute everywhere q dot equals to zero and q double dot equals to zero. And let's see what happens. So this term cancels out because the acceleration is zero. m times g is here. And this whole thing equals to, this term is zero again, and this will be equal to the proportional gain over the radius minus n times, uh, there's a minus sign, so I also have to handle the minus sign times the real and the desired position so we gain this very simple equation for the equilibrium and as we can see there will be always a positioning error so this q minus q desired term will be equal to something like minus m times g times the radius over the proportional gain I get rid of this figure and uh, this whole term here is the you can call it error okay this is the error the difference between the desired and the actual position and this is not zero as you can see but you can uh, you can uh, have a smaller and smaller error if you increase the value of the proportional gain. So the error, the error is zero. Only for for infinitely large uh, proportional gain, right? So if I substitute here an infinite number, the positioning error will be zero. Otherwise, it will be a finite number. So there will be always some, some gap between the desired and the real position. But this is not possible because of the digital effects. So you can never apply infinitely large proportional gain. And this is not possible because of the... unstable behavior due to the digital effects or you could use some kind of analog analog computer but uh, in that case there will be also some measuring error of the real position so there will be always a delay and you cannot uh, get an infinitely large uh, proportional gain for sure and the other problem is that so we, we said that there are some problems here so one problem was this uh, static error which is not zero okay and the other problem is that uh, uh, 
the other problem is that the acceleration term is missing from the control and that's uh, not so good so the other thing is that the acceleration term is missing so there should so you, you can imagine we don't go to the details for now but if you want to accelerate this elevator upwards of course there should be some kind of force which compensates for the acceleration so there should be a term which can be calculated like m times the acceleration of the desired position okay so this kind of term should appear somewhere in the control and we don't have this term but uh, we feel that if we want to accelerate upwards then there should be a term which provides the corresponding force to accelerate the, the, the body in upward direction. So this was the, the PD controller. And let's try another kind of controller, okay? And we will try to get rid of these problems. Okay, so now let's try another controller. Which will be a kind of mechanical control, let's say. So we would like to get rid of the static positioning error. So let's... So we would like to cancel out somehow the, 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 the gravitational force in static problems. Let's try applying a counterweight so we will have another weight on the on the other side so we reconstruct our elevator structure so we still have this uh, cable winch but uh, the rope is put on this uh, disc and on the left hand side there is the elevator as before and on the right hand side there is the so-called counter weight but it has the same mass okay so this is the this is our new system so we don't uh, consider now the changing of the control in the in the software of the of the elevator but we try to modify the physical structure of the system in order to get rid of positioning errors and then we will have again free body diagrams so yeah these equations will not be true from now because the mechanical part is changing so free body diagrams will come here and the first free body diagram will be related to the to the cable winch up here so we have two cable forces they may be different so this is k1 and this is k2 cable force and we still have the control torque applied on the cable winch this is u so this is the free body diagram from, for, for this uh, winch up here. And then we will have another free body diagram from, for the counterweight. Okay, so I just draw the counterweight itself. And then uh, if uh, there is a positive acceleration of the elevator then the counterweight will accelerate downwards so there is some kind of kinematic relation between them so this will be the positive acceleration for the counterweight but the forces are acting in the same direction so downwards we have the gravitational force and upwards 
we have the second cable force. Yeah, and of course we should draw some kind of angular acceleration here, but again it will, doesn't matter because the, the, the inertia will be zero for this uh, range. But it is coherent with the, this is basically equal to equal to Q double that over the radius. This is the angular acceleration of this whole range. Okay, and the third, the third free will diagram is related to the elevator itself. So again, we have a cable force upwards. We have a positive acceleration in the upward direction and this is the same gravitational force. So as you can see, the gravitational force acting on the counterweight and on the elevator, they are just equal to each other and uh, and again this is the real position and there is a desired position somewhere else so usually we are not that lucky to have these two positions in the in the same place and sorry i will just uh, in the equations there is q minus q desired so i draw it smaller and then i am able to show that the positioning error is measured here so now it is a nice figure because you can show here the positioning error okay so we have the three free bell diagrams and let's uh, create the equations so we have one two and three and for each rigid body, just one equation is interesting for us. So in case of the first equation, as we said, the inertia is zero. So on the left hand side, there is zero. And then we can say that uh, zero times the angular acceleration is equal to U plus uh, R, the radius times the second cable force minus the radius times the first cable force and this is the equation for the first rigid body and then we have the counterweight the the mass times the sorry this is q double dot the mass times the acceleration is equal to m times g minus the second cable force and it's important that this is the positive direction in case of this equation and in case of the third rigid body we have m times q double dot which is equal to minus the gravitational force so the the sign is opposite here plus we have the the first cable force and uh, nothing else i think and uh, we can put everything together so we introduce some kind of control again let's try PD so we change the physical structure but we don't change the control itself so again the control input will be equal to minus proportional gate times the positioning error minus the differential gain times the velocity error okay so we have the same control input as before but the physical system is changed and now we put everything together so everything will be substituted into the first equation and we will obtain something uh, sorry first we don't yeah that's the point 
So first we don't uh, substitute the control. We just put these two equations into the first one. So it will result uh, that uh, u equals to to r times the second table force. But the second table force can be expressed by these equations. So the second table force is just m times g minus m times q double dot. So this would be the second table force from this equation. Okay. And then we have another term minus r, r times uh, k1, but k1 is again expressed by the acceleration and the gravity here. So we just want to cancel out the cable forces. Okay, so we we cancel out k1 and k2, and then we will have one single equation for the whole system. Okay, so minus r times k1, and k1 is simply equal to m times q double dot plus m times g. So this is m times g plus m times q double dot. So this is our new equation, and the cable forces are cancelled out. And then uh, we see that some terms are just... Uh, cancelling and uh, basically the gravity force and that is the important point here is disappearing for from our equation so these two terms are cancelling out sorry this was here the first cable of force okay so this is r times m times g minus r times m times g so that's just cancelled out and the u the control force will be equal to and this is uh, minus and this is also minus here so finally we will have two times r times m times q double dot and this is our new equation which describes the motion of the whole system okay so u is equal to two times the radius times the acceleration force let's say and uh, now we can put here the control or, or we, can, we can reorganize it into a nicer form so we just uh, say that m times q double dot equals to to minus u over 2r okay so this is our new dynamic equation for the whole system and now we will put the control input here and we will check what happens okay so now we apply the control input so this equation and this equation together will be analyzed so this is the dynamic equation of the whole system and instead of the q i will apply my pv control low so what we obtain is m times q double dot which is equal to minus and i would like to get rid of minus because everything is minus here and that's minus there too so i will just say that one over two r times everything what is here kt q minus q desired plus kd q dot minus q dot desired so this is our new equation together with the control and considering the whole mechanical system and let's see the equilibrium again so now we can get rid of uh, most of the figures from here okay so Let's check the static error first. The static error is 
check, check by substituting simply q double dot equals to zero and q dot equals to zero. So our new equation will be zero equals to one over two r times. Uh, this cancels out in static case. So I could write kt here, kt over 2r times q minus q desired. And this term, of course, is not zero, so the error must be zero to uh, satisfy this equation. So now we see that the error must be zero, which is a very happy thing. So by applying this counterweight here, uh, we just got rid of the static or positioning error in the static case, which is very good. We solved one problem, but uh, the other thing that the acceleration is still missing. So we didn't put any term here like uh, m times double q dot double uh, sorry m times q desired double dot so there is no any accelerating term here so basically if i would like to change the position of the elevator then during the motion there will be some kind of errors but uh, we can also solve this and uh, If there are some questions, please ask. And now we will move to another example. So in the case of this example, we see we, we seen that uh, by applying a counterweight, we can get rid of the positioning error. That's the message. And this is basically the idea of the inverse dynamics control or feed forward control. But the counterweight will be not applied in the physical system, but in the in the control software. But uh, we will see how. And uh, let's see another example before we go on with the details. Again, we we would like to uh, show the idea of the of the inverse dynamics controller and this will be a much much simpler example so you can find this kind of structure in everyday life when the cars are crossing the train railway okay so this is this is the system and uh, there is a homogeneous rod here with some kind of uh, mass and uh, and length and uh, let's see the free body diagrams so basically we have a torque here which is the control torque we will demonstrate again the the idea behind the feed forward control or inverse dynamics control so there is m times g there is the control torque here and we have an angle here just simply we call it q okay so this is the the general coordinate the angle of this uh, bar and this is the angular acceleration so this is the free, free will diagram and we can say see that the uh, the mass moment of inertia times the acceleration is equal to so we now create the whole dynamic equation the control input minus the, the, the torque of the gravitational force which is m times g times l over 2 right times the cosine angle and we just uh, check everything in the desired uh, configuration. 
So Q desire the double dot is here and Q desire is there. And uh, now we see that uh, if we have if we have a, a Q desired trajectory, which means that the angular position is prescribed in time, then the U can be directly expressed, right? So I can just calculate how to how to apply a torque here in order to move my uh, my bar in the in the prescribed or desired way. So basically, we can just express the control torque from the dynamic equations. Okay, the control torque. is uh, expressed from the dynamic equation and then if you apply this torque it will behave in the desired way so we can just say that u is equal to m times g times L over 2 times cosine the desired angle and there is another term plus 1 over 3 times L m times L square sorry this is L square here that's important times uh, Q desired double dot so if you apply this torque here then it will behave in the desired way, so you will, the, you will just uh, have the prescribed motion. And there is one more important thing that uh, in this uh, control torque, which is basically can call as a feed forward term in the control, feed forward control torque. It is forward because you know in advance what kind of motion is uh, is prescribed and without any feedback if you apply this torque in advance you will have the the, the same motion so of course this is a function of time that's very important so everything it depends on time everything depends on time okay and here you see that this is a static term And this is a dynamic term. And this will be responsible for cancelling out the gravitational force. And this will be responsible for cancelling out or providing the, the force for acceleration. And uh, This is the idea. Okay, so now we go to have the general formalism by understanding these kind of uh, things. So we have to distinguish this so-called feed-forward term from the PD idea because PD is a feed vector you measure the error and then act with the controller but now in the feed forward term we, we act in advance so we are proactive let's say okay so let's see the, the general formalism for the feedback linearization or in other words the inverse dynamics control so now we will see the equation in general feedback linearization or inverse dynamics control 
and everything will be totally general. So in general we have an equation of motion and uh, we can take this general form. So there is a, always a mass matrix which can depend on the coordinates. There is an acceleration which is multiplied with the mass matrix and then there will be some other forces and torques they are collected in a vector and this whole thing is equal to to the active forces but uh, I think we introduced before this uh, notation that there is a control input vector and there is a, an input matrix or distribution matrix which is basically usually identity matrix for for serial robots with relative joint coordinates and this distributes the, the control inputs on the on the whole system and these can be forces and torques here what we need so this is the general form of the equation of motion and now we would like to to do the the same thing what we have done in the case of this uh, tilted bar so the control input or the control low is that the control input is just expressed from the equation of motion so I can just say that I should uh, generate the control input by simply expressing it from the equation of motion. So there will be H inverse times everything else. So I just calculate the inverse of this matrix, multiply everything and everything is nice. And we should show that, sorry, everything are the real coordinates of the robot and not the desired so I can express the control input if, if the motion of the system is, is known. Okay, it is very important notation. So we can we can express we can express u if q q dot and q double dot is known. That's a very important idea. If you know, and this is basically called inverse dynamics, if you know the motion of the system, you are able to calculate the joint forces. And, uh, and one more thing, so instead of this Q double dot, we apply, and I will use red color here, I will apply another thing here, another variable. So instead of Q double dot, we apply this so-called auxiliary input or synthetic input so instead of cube double that you can say v so i can put anything here that's the idea and we can choose it depending our goals so it is basically arbitrary what i put here instead of the instead of the instead of the acceleration okay we should say that this is instead the acceleration and uh, and let's see what is the typical choice for this so-called auxiliary or synthetic input and now you will see that everything will be included 
what we were talking about before. So first of all, there is a term which is equal to the desired acceleration of the system. And on the top of it, we will apply a PD controller. So there will be a matrix KD times the velocity error. which is the difference between the real and the desired velocity or general velocity of the system. And there will be another term, which is basically the proportional term Q minus Q desired. Oops, there is no dot, but there is underlined. These are vectors. Okay, and this is the core idea to have this so-called synthetic input and the synthetic input is chosen by including the desired acceleration of the system and also the proportional and the derivative gains. Okay, so this is the desired acceleration of the system and this whole thing here is the feed feedback feedback term. So we, we feed back the error information about the positioning error and we can change the input which is also included in the control log. So if there is some kind of error in the positioning, the calculated control input will change. And uh, now we can check how it behave. So let's check the convergence of the whole system. Not only the static error, but we check everything. And we put the control law back to the equation of motion. So let's have some kind of numbering. It will be a quite complicated equation basically, because uh, we will put this equation to here and then the whole Control input will be put here. So if you want to check the convergence, we would like to put we put V in the equation of U and then the whole thing is substituted into the equation of motion. Okay. So we say that uh, n times, well, we should show the dependencies, unfortunately, n times q double dot plus uh, the c q q dot is equal to h times. And now I should substitute the control input from here. So now I'm just copying, instead of u, this whole term, and it will be put here. So it will be h times the inverse of h. So we are happy because it will cancel out times uh, the mass matrix times uh, the v. So now it is time to apply this whole thing. And instead of V, I just copy this uh, term here. So it will be uh, M times. I use different colors to, to, to have the understanding. So this is M times uh, V, and V is equal to Q double dot desired. This is double dot minus KD times Q dot minus q dot desired plus k sorry minus kp times q minus q desired and uh, the bracket is closed so this is the end of the synthetic input and now we can finish up this term by adding c here plus c q q dot and uh, 
I think we can close this bracket here. See, QQ though is not so nice. Okay, so this is the complete equation if you substitute everything. And now let's check how it looks like. So now I can get rid of these equations from now. So let's uh, check what happens here. So I can cancel out these terms. This is just simply identity matrix. And then this whole thing will cancel out again. And I think we should stop there. So having an identity matrix here, you will have the same C vector at the end of the equation, so you can also cancel that out. And what we have at the end is, uh, so I go up here, is m times q double dot, which equals to m times q double dot uh, desired. minus uh, the PD term. So this is Q minus Q desire dot minus KP times Q minus Q desired. So we have this equation and you clearly see that this mass matrix cancels out again. And finally we have a very, very nice equation for for the error basically. So this is Q double dot and everything is put on the left hand side. So Q double dot minus Q double dot desired plus the differential gain matrix times Q minus Q desired dot plus KP times Q minus Q desired and uh, if we introduce again, we already introduced, but it's just a reminder. So the error, the error is uh, the difference between the real and the desired position. So if I apply this, the final equation will be A stable equation for the error so finally we say that the acceleration for the error plus kd times the acceleration for derivative plus kp times sorry the error first derivative and the error itself is zero and uh, this is good because if kp and kd are uh, positive definite matrices that then it will be stable. So this is a, a simple differential, ordinary differential equation which is stable for, for positive definite Kp and Kd gain matrices. And one more thing, so if these matrices are diagonal, so if KD and KP are diagonal, which means that uh, there are only non-zero elements in the diagonal and everything else is zero, then we will have this very simple equation for each degree of freedom. So let's say, E double dot I from the for the ith degree of freedom plus KD times E dot E I dot plus KP times E I equal to zero and I goes from from one to n for the n degree of freedom system. Okay. 
so we can check the stability joint by joint but you have to recognize that the equation is exactly the same for each joint so we don't have to consider different kind of uh, proportional and derivative gains because this equation is the same for each joint for each degree of freedom so we, we could just say that uh, it is just the error double dot plus kd times error dot plus kp times uh, error which is equal to zero so there is no sense for uh, studying this equation for each degree of freedom because this is exactly the same for each joint so we can just uh, check this equation in general Okay, here one more thing. So we should say here that if this is stable, it means that the, the limit for t goes to infinity of the error is, is zero. So that, is, that means that the system is stable. Okay, so this error will go to zero. And this is also true here. So, but now we have a scalar error for one joint only so the the limit of this error is just zero so it will go to zero but not for sure it's depending on the implementation of the control so if we have digital control again we have to consider the stability diagram or stable region of the parameters the gain parameters so now we have to talk a bit about the digital effects, but this is just a reminder. And I would like to just uh, connect everything to the, to the other part of the subject. Okay, so we can get rid of this and we have only this equation, but this is true for each joint. So let's check the digital effects for each joint, each joint. So this equation will have a little bit different shape. So the acceleration, it will be familiar for you, I guess. The acceleration of the error in a certain time instant is equal to minus kd times the dot of the error, but it was measured in the previous time step and we have the same term for the proportional gain and the position error and this is measured also in the previous time step but it's important that t goes from from tj to tj plus tau so uh, in the lecture from Gábor Stépán, you, I think you know the meaning of this equation. So we are measuring something at a certain time instant, and then there is a zero order holder. So the same control output will be generated in one whole time step, and then the update are measurements. And this is the resulting equation, which is basically the same. And uh, We have to recognize that the mass here is zero. So therefore, the dimensionless parameter are just equal to, it was also introduced by Gábor Stépán. So this is uh, the dimensionless proportional gain. 
this is basically over one because there should be the mass here but the mass is one now and similarly the dimensionless uh, derivative gain is related to the, the normal derivative gain times the, the tau is the the time step over the mass but the mass is one now okay and you can construct this uh, so everything is familiar from now I guess you can construct this uh, PD stability diagram and uh, you learned how to calculate this uh, curve and it is possible to calculate analytically and this point is always one here if the mass is one Oh, sorry, yeah, for the for dimensionless parameter, it's always one here. This is always uh, one over four. And the important thing is that there is a point where the decay is the fastest, the error, the decay of the error. You can calculate this point, and basically in the dimensionless. Uh, Stability diagram, this point is always P equals to 1 over 27 and D equals to 27 over 54. But you have to check how it's calculated. Okay, so please, please check the, the, the lecture notes okay, from Professor Gábor Stépen. You can you can check you in your notes, hopefully. So the the message is that this stability diagram is applicable for each joint if you apply this kind of inverse dynamics controller. Okay, so if we apply, if we apply. the inverse dynamics controller together with the PD then you can use this stability chart to choose your PD gains okay This stability chart can be used you can, yeah, for, for each joint. So you can choose one parameter and it will be applicable for all of your joints. So finally. You can calculate the real uh, gains, so Kp will be equal to uh, P over tau square, because the mass is 1, so mass is not here, and the differential gain will be equal to the dimensionless d over tau, so everything depends on the time step, that's very important. And then these Kp and Kd will be applicable for each joint. So if we go back to the controller, there were the Kp matrix, but the Kp matrix basically can put together by just having a, a diagonal matrix. Like this, okay. So this is an identity matrix, and then you will have the the matrix of the derivative gains, and that will be also equal to this uh, gain, which only depends on tau if you choose the fastest decay, and then again you multiply this with a with an identity matrix okay
So this is very very simple. And basically, the ho in the homework you will have to do something similar. And uh, I will try to show something. I didn't want to make everything complicated, so I will just put my computer here. And I will try to show some video. So in the video you will see that uh, first there will be a simple PD controller for a 3 degree of freedom robot. And you will also see the desired position and the realized position. And then there will be another animation with an inverse dynamics controller together with the PD and you will see that uh, the the, the positioning error will be much much less actually zero in the simulation so this is a PD controller and you see that uh, there is a positioning error comparing to the desired position and now the inverse dynamics controller comes and it goes directly to the desired position and there is no any error okay this is PD again there are serious oscillations and finally there is a positioning error but the inverse dynamics controller is much more accurate as you see so this is the big difference between just applying a pd controller and having an inverse dynamics controller so we can sum up everything Again, with some very simple examples. So let's sum up everything. So if you have a simple PD controller, and you apply it for a very very simple system which is just the uh, MS block and there is a gravity and this is the positive acceleration and you can we didn't talk about the friction but uh, you also can have friction so the main thing is that the positioning error will be not zero if it is just simply a kp times the positioning error minus kd times the velocity error so there will be always a positioning error due to three things so as we have seen gravity causes the kind of positioning error so if you have gravity and you just apply a PD control it will be always like what we shown before so my hand is the desired position and the ball is the is the real position and there will be always some kind of uh, gap between the desired and the real position and if you increase the gravitational force, the gap is just increasing. Or if you apply a more elastic or less stiff uh, rubber here, then also the positioning error will be larger. So gravity causes problems. And we have seen that If you have only a PD controller, then during the acceleration, the controller will not be accurate because it does not provide the accelerating force. But this is also true for, for velocity related forces like Coriolis forces and so on. So acceleration and velocity dependent terms are not cancelled out 
and therefore there will be some kind of positioning error and one more important thing is the friction the problem is that the friction is very hard to model so it's almost impossible to include the friction in your inverse dynamics model so you can just fight against friction by by choosing the best PD parameter from your stability chart the largest possible and you can increase your PD parameters by uh, reducing the time step so if you have a faster controller you can increase the PD gains and therefore the positioning error due to the friction will be slower uh, smaller sorry okay so what will what you will observe here is that that is the time and this is the the, the position of this uh, mass and uh, there is the the desired value and if it is a static desired position the real solution will be something like something like this okay so you will never reach the desired value because of gravity and also because of friction so it is uh, it is the general conclusion and it is also true if you have some kind of uh, uh, desired trajectory which changes in time so if you have a constant speed for example for the Q so you have to go up with a constant speed then your positioning error will be again not zero so it will just uh, follow with a it will converge somewhere here into another line so there will be always some kind of error and this is the same here okay so this is what we know about the PD but you, you, you can have some some improvements and one improvement is the the PID but uh, you can you have to be careful with PID controllers because of stability problems and uh, the other thing is that you can choose a smaller time step in the digital controller and then you will have larger PD gains okay so you, you can have these two choices you can also add the integrator and it will somehow eliminate the error but that's very slow so if the desired position is changing quickly the integrator doesn't help really and the other choice this is basically very good is to have a smaller time step and then you can increase your PD gains and you will decrease your positioning error so that's very important and uh, the other thing is to not to use a simple PD but you also can use a feed forward controller or in other words an inverse dynamics controller so the other thing what we can sum up is the inverse dynamics controller or in other words feedback linearization or in other words feed forward control feed forward control is basically a more general term but uh, what we have done here is is fitting into the into the group of feed forward controllers and this eliminates the errors due to due to uh, gravity and acceleration or velocity dependent terms which is good but it doesn't eliminate basically in the form what we what we checked 
the error due to the friction so friction is still a problem and it's always a big deal and uh, let's check as a last step let's check a very very simple model in which we apply this kind of feed forward control idea okay so in case of a very simple model it will be very quick quick so we have this uh, mass and uh, we say that uh, there is a control input this is basically a force which helps to to lift it up and the positive acceleration is this of course there is a position coordinate and uh, and there is a gravitational force acting on the on this math block and we say that the friction is is zero for now okay the friction coefficient is zero in our example so let's check this equation uh, this uh, simple example and we will apply our pv controller together with an inverse dynamics controller so we, we do everything again but uh, it will be quite simple because we have a very simple equation of motion so the equation of motion is just if you create the free diagram you see that m times double dot equals to minus m times g plus u that's very simple this is the equation of motion and then basically we can reorganize it in the general form so everything is on the left hand side except the control input and this is one times u so now we can just say that this is the mass matrix, this is the acceleration vector, but this is just one, one, one dimensional. This whole term here is the, the, the vector of uh, any active forces or, 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 or inertial forces in the system, so you can put both here. And this is now the control input matrix, which is just simply one, and this is the control input with one element now. So this is a very simple form of the equation of motion. And then you can create the control input. We said that uh, you can just express the control input from the equation of motion. So you say that u will be equal to one over one. Yeah, I have to divide by one, but it doesn't matter. So u equals to m times q double dot and instead of q double dot i will say n times this so-called auxiliary input plus n times g so i just express the control input and if i put any acceleration here it will do what i want yeah so if i put zero here then it will be equal to m times g so it will just hold the mass in the desired position if there is no any error or initial velocity and if i want to accelerate it by i don't know 20 meter or second square then there will be the corresponding force here so it, it, it really works if v equals to q double dot. and uh, let's choose this so-called synthetic input or in other words auxiliary input so we say that v equals to this is the same again so v equals to the desired acceleration plus sorry minus the kp minus q minus q desired plus instead minus kd q minus q desire dot so this is the synthetic input and the desired acceleration is here and you have some feedback terms to eliminate the errors 
And finally, if you put everything back into the equation of motion, as we have done in the general case, so we put everything into this equation, so m times q double dot plus m times g equals to u, and u equals to m times uh, v, which is this whole term, So this was V, we can show it here, I will use some kind of different color, so this whole term is, is V, and uh, so U is equal to N times V plus N times G, So the whole thing is equal to the to the control input. Okay, if we put it back to the equation of motion, and again we will see that uh, everything cancels out. So you can just uh, get rid of the mess everywhere, right? And what we, you obtain is uh, simply and you can get rid of the whole gravity term because it appears on both sides so again you obtain a very nice equation q double dot minus q double dot desired and these terms are put on the left hand side this should be kd first okay so we say we again obtain the same error equation it shows that the error will go to zero and it doesn't matter if it moves quickly or slowly or it uh, stays in a static equilibrium it doesn't matter so we can draw these kind of uh, time histories as before for the PD so we can draw the same diagram as for the PD so this is the desired position and the real solution or the real position if initially we have some positioning error it doesn't matter so it will just converge exactly to the desire if there is no friction okay that's important so friction can cause a lot of mess and problems for us and uh, it also works for for any kind of uh, desired trajectory. Actually, not any kind of desired trajectory because the Q desired should be a two times continuous trajectory because the acceleration of the path appears here. So you have to be able to two times differentiate the desired trajectory. But if it is true, so if it is two times differentiable then again you can have some initial error but the error will be eliminated soon and your real path will be conver will converge to the to the to the desired one so there will be some other examples and there will be examples uploaded to the Moodle system but the homework will be about this uh, kind of thing and the homework will be also uploaded hopefully today to the Moodle, Moodle system latest tomorrow and uh, basically you can use a symbolic algebraic softwares and you can also use MATLAB and uh, I will provide some MATLAB uh, material to help the solution of the homework and the uh, lecture notes, the handwritten lecture notes in PDF will be also uploaded to the Moodle system and this video will be also available and, and you can ask if you will have some problems with the, with the homework but next week we will also talk about this, these things and uh, 
Mm, maybe we will, we will solve, a, solve a problem which is very similar to the second homework, okay? So please ask if something is not clear or if something is missing. Okay, thank you very much and uh, let's meet next week.